Okay, I'm set up here. Is there any other questions before we move forward? Perfect. Okay, so next thing I want to talk about, guys, is map awareness. So we're going to look at SMIR. Actually, if you guys want to open up the map screen, and then you can hit the title of VR training, click that. It'll bring up a drop-down menu of all the continents, both closed and open. You can hit SMIR, and it'll take you right to uh, that map um, as it is. And I kind of want to have this as a visualization that you guys can look at while I talk about this. Um, so map awareness is really, really important, whether you are uh, just squad leading or the platoon lead, but especially as the platoon lead, um, only because the number of people you're directing, um, you know, there's more people you're directing, um, and you can have a bigger impact on the map. So when I talk about map awareness, I talk about recognizing certain things that are going on, um, recognizing the important parts of the map. So that would be number one, um, just very obviously, what does the continent look like right now? So how much territory do we have in Vanu? How much territory do the TR and NC have? Uh, how much time is left in the alert is really, really important, especially when it gets down to the wire and there's only one or two bases between uh, a victory or a loss. Um, that happens more often than you might think, uh, which is always a lot of fun, but uh, definitely important to watch that timer. And then the other thing which I want to go over in more detail here is uh, the stronghold bases or the checkpoint or, or choke point bases um, for each continent. So I'm going to use SMIR as an example here um, because there's some really easy ones, uh, but you guys can also uh, take a look at the other continents, and um, I'll kind of let you know how to find the, the important ones for each continent here. So, very quickly, on Esamir, we have a few different stronghold or choke point bases, um, and as you might guess, the containment sites, uh, all three of them, are uh, some of those, those stronghold bases. They're very, very difficult to take, right? Most often you need at least two to one pop to take them. Um, otherwise you just start a huge farm and uh, nothing happens for the entire alert sometimes. Um, so they're huge and they're big and they're terrifying. Um, with enough pop you can take them, but they're definitely, uh, because they soak up a lot of time and a lot of people, uh, they're certainly, they certainly deserve the title of choke point. Um, other bases that are important are going to be the amp stations um, and the tech plant, right? So we have on our side the Freyer amp station. Let me, oh shoot, I can't actually put Platoon Waypoint on it because it's on a different continent. Um, but just southeast of the Esamir Northern Work Gate, where ours is, is the Freyer amp station. And that's, it's less of a, like it's not one that you would hope to have to count on because it is fairly close to our warp gate, but you know if the TR or NC is really close to it, um, that's a base you do not want to lose. Um, and actually the NC is pretty close to it right now at Aurora Materials. We're not not doing too, too well here on, uh, on SMR, but we've got some time to go, so we can turn that around. So for our amp station on our side, we've got the containment sites. Um, let me, yeah, let's look at uh, little there's actually a base between Friar Amp Station and Containment Site, uh, a little ways north of that, is Snowshear Fort. That's actually a base that gets attacked very often uh, when we lose our Containment Site. It's the next choke point base, um, and it does get attacked fairly often. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the important bases there. Uh, we also have, um, yeah, the Manny Containment Site between us and the NC right now, the longest of the NC. Uh, so that's a fairly nice base to have on our side. Um, there's a couple of different ones that are on the NC and TR side. You guys might have been to Pale Canyon. Um, I wouldn't call it a stronghold base. It is fairly easy to take and it flips back and forth quite a bit through the alerts and stuff. Um, but it is definitely a choke point. It opens up a lot of different lattices. There is the Balder Amp Station. Right next to that, we have uh, Watterson's Redemption is definitely a stronghold uh, choke point base. If you lose that, 
a uh, bad thing happens. The bad thing happens. I can't say the right bad things happen. There we go, plural. Um, and of course, we have the tech plant. We have the Jord Am station. So I'm I'm kind of throwing out a lot of names here, but the basic way to determine if something is a stronghold base um, is is it not a small base, right? So you can see the the symbols on the map. Um, is it not a small base for most of them, um, with the exception of bases like Pale Canyon, uh, Pale Canyon, like I said there? Um, is it a base that is um, on, um, like, does it open up into different lattices? So actually, if you look over at the Envari containment site that we were just looking at on the west side, um, that opens up two lattices for us on our side, right? Tapway Station and Envari South Bank uh, open up with the capture of Envari containment site, which we have right now. So that definitely helps um, kind of secure that lattice. Um, we can attack two different places from, from where we are, uh, so they're really nice there. But the other kind of big thing about what makes it a stronghold base is just how hard is it to take. Um, oh shoot, is our platoon full? Okay, yeah, I'm looking at the map so I can't see it's filling up. Thank you, Black Dragon, I'll throw you into there. Throw you some people, and yeah, feel free to uh, put a description away, introduction, general training, something like that. Thank you very much. So yeah, I'm kind of I'm I'm not doing this as well as I would like, but that's that's the essential part of it, right? There's a lot of bases um, that are choke point holes that are stronghold bases. Um, they can be. Yeah, there we go. I'm now reading up on some of the chat. Just so yeah, just like Asami said, three point bases. That's actually a really important note um, that I forgot to mention. So yeah, Mathersons, like Asami said, uh, Isa Tech Plant, which is actually I believe it's the only three point uh, tech plant. The rest of them are one points. Uh, Mathersons, Isa Tech Plant, Watersons is actually a four point. So that's that's the reason it's really hard to take and really um, a really nice stronghold base. The containment sites are, of course, are three bases, um, and most of the amp stations are also three bases. Um, so the more points, the harder it is to take, the better it is as a stronghold or a choke point. So yeah, that's that's kind of a, a, a longer version of uh, what's important on the map. So if I can get you to kind of internalize that quickly, the next important thing in terms of map awareness, right, is communicating that to your platoon. What are we doing? What, like, why are we doing it? Where do you want people to go? It's very easy to pick a base and just go, okay, guys, let's go here and throw a platoon waypoint it and, you know, get people to go there. Um, and that's fine, um, but you want to communicate exactly what you want as much as you can um, and tell them why. So like say, uh, I'm going to give you guys an example. Um, we, yeah, very quickly, I don't want to take too long to analyze the map here while, while we're talking, but let's say I wanted to be at untapped. We just finished taking that, say, and I want to go to um, Rhyme. Well, I might say, I'm going to take, I want people to go to Rhyme. I want people to bring, uh, we're going to do a galaxy drop from Matherson, so squad leads, you know, to get galaxies up from Matherson's Triumph, and we'll get everyone in. The reason I wouldn't call for Sunders, uh, potentially, is because there's a lot of distance uh, away from Rhyme, because there's no vehicle spawns at untapped. Um, so galaxy drop from Matherson's to Rhyme, we'll get a couple of anvils down, um, and you know, we're going to try and make a big farm so that we can take, um, you know, maybe we're pulling pop off from elsewhere, from man and containment. I'm honestly looking back at that thought and that's actually probably not a good idea. Um, we don't necessarily want to pull a whole lot of pop. Rhyme is actually a nice base to have. Uh, so if we can take that without a whole bunch of pop coming from Manny, that'd be nice. Um, but yeah, so if you can kind of see what, what the extra information I did there, right? People know exactly what we're doing, why we're doing it, 
um, and they don't have any doubts as to as to what they're doing. Um, sometimes people can, you know, get confused and they can panic, especially at the end of an alert, you know, and people will be calling out, we're losing this base and this base and this base, and, you know, things will, uh, a whole lot of fires will be start going on. It's just something that happens uh, at the end of the alert, of course. People are are getting that adrenaline up and, and things are happening and everything's down to the wire. Um, and that doesn't happen nearly as much. Um, you get, it makes you more confident, it makes everyone else more confident when you tell people what the bases you want them to watch are, what the bases that are important to you for this alert, right? Um, so that's that's what I'm saying here, is map awareness for yourself, where you want to go, how you want to do it, um, but then always communicating to your platoon uh, as well, the how and why and where uh, and who, even if you're doing, uh, if you're splitting up squads and such, but that's a whole other topic. Okay, and that actually brings me nicely to the next thing I want to talk about, which is um, having patience in a platoon um, or even a squad, right? Obviously the odds, or not the odds, but the it's a little more difficult running a platoon than it is a squad, simply because there's more people, more things are happening. Um, but I very, very much want to say, right, and I, I can't say this enough, um, is if you are having a bad day in real life, um, if you're just, you know, struggling in game, if, if you don't think that the, if you don't think that you're going to be able to give people a good time leading, don't lead. It's, it's just really, really as simple as that. Like, don't, don't feel compelled to lead every day or feel like you, you have to get a set number of hours in or, you know, whatever it is. If you're having a bad day, don't lead. You'll start leading and then you're, you'll feel negative, you'll feel more pressured, um, and people will feel that, right? A lot of emotion comes from our voice and how we use it. So even though we're not all in the same room, um, you know, we can't see each other, we can hear each other's voice, and that does a lot for motivation, for uh, cohesion, all of that. So definitely uh, lead on your good days um, as much as you can, and just don't lead on your bad days. I've done it before sometimes if I don't recognize them having a bad day, and if you don't recognize that at first, that's fine. Um, if you notice it happening, definitely ask if someone can either take the platoon lead um, or disband if no one wants to, right? It's better to disband um, and have everyone go their separate ways than keep the platoon going um, but end badly because, like I said, you're having a bad day or whatever. Um, and there's no shame in that. There's absolutely no shame in disbanding a platoon if things are going bad and you, um, you know, just keep can't keep up with everything Right, it's 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 not at all bad. It's it's just something that you that you need to do. Yeah, I just turned up the chat. Like uh, Gade said, listen to to Commander Sirius. Right, we had actually um, he was leading a platoon for us for I think it was for the the charity event actually, not too long ago. Um, I mean, if you guys have have seen his streams before or watched his videos, like he's very upbeat. He throws a lot of energy into it. He's super positive. Right? And because of that, simply because of how much energy th he throws into it and how, how positive he sounds, people listen and things get done. It's not because he's necessarily a, a master at strategy or tactics or any of that, though he's also good at that as well. Um, but a lot of it comes in how he uses his voice and how he leads, right? how, how he chooses to show himself. Um, and so that goes a long way for this, in, in just showing um, how you present yourself uh, impacts a lot on how... Uh, everyone in your platoon feels as well while, while they're playing. So that's nice in terms of positive stuff. Um, in terms of things going wrong in the platoon, right, a couple of examples can be people might be coming into your platoon, you know, maybe they, they're not leading but they're just in your platoon and they're having a bad day, maybe they're saying things that are, are bringing down the negative, or the you know, they might be being negative, and they might be bringing down cohesion, they might be bringing down motivation and morale. Um, and if people are doing that, right, then you need to deal with that as the squad leader, as the platoon lead. Um, that's, it is your job, 
like we said, remember, is to give people a good time and make sure that that is a positive experience. And so if you have people in your platoon that are actively taking away from that, um, it's your job to either help them correct that and ask them to, um, you know, if it comes down to it, just, you know, not not be on the comms as much and just say, hey, you know, let's, let's leave that out. We're here to have a positive time. Um, and if, like I'm using a, a, a more extreme example here, um, most people are fine with it, most people cooperate, but if they're just having a really bad day and they won't stop being negative and problematic, kick them. Like that's, that's your job, is to keep the morale and motivation and the positive experience of Platoon um, up as much as you can. So if people aren't there to have a good time and they're simply letting out all their frustrations in your Platoon, well, that's not giving them a good time, um, and that's not giving you or your platoon a good time either. Um, exactly how you should go about removing people from platoons and stuff, I won't go into here. Um, it's a bit, you know, I, I might make it a bit of a longer subject, um, but just know that that's a thing, right? You can remove people, you can bring people in your platoon, um, but if things go wrong or if things start going south because of what people are doing or people are saying, um, you need to take care of that. And then on the other side of things, there is the TR and the NC, right? They are our opponents. Um, and they will make the game frustrating for us. They will make the game challenging for us. This game would be very, very boring if we didn't have any opponents trying to win as much as as we are, right? Everybody... I gotta stop in that button. Um... Everybody's trying to win as much as we are. Everyone wants wants those those certs and the ISO four at the end, um, and so we are going to butt heads all the time, right? All the time, all through the alert. It's an hour and a half long. Um, yeah, games definitely. If if people are are going through a lot and it's a tough alert, definitely give people a break. But the main point I want to make there is that um, often. Right, we have three factions in in this game, which means it's not simply a one v one; it's a one v one v one, and that can create a lot of complicated, um, you know, events in the game, a, a lot of complicated strategy that goes on, and it can feel a lot like the other two factions are teaming up on on you, you know, as if it was on purpose. Um, but you have to remember, there's a lot of natural flow to this game. Um, that just where sometimes that just happens, right? Most of the people we're fighting aren't even in platoons or squads like we are. There's a whole lot of stuff that happens, um, and so what I kind of like to do, you know, thinking about that when stuff like that happens, is you just roll with it. You you accept it. You roll with it, um, and and you not just make the best of it, but you honestly just make it part of of what happens, right? You. Are honestly um, in a role play, right? When you're platoon lead, so if you're getting double teamed, you can make that part of the game, um, and still make it a positive experience, as if that was supposed to happen. There's, there's, there's no question about it. Like, it's not, oh man, they're, they're double teaming us. You know, how could they? It's just, okay, here they, here they go. They're double teaming. Like, it's time. It was always supposed to happen, um, as far as you're telling everyone, um, and it is, right? It's, it's inevitable. Things like that are going to happen. And so you just accept it, you roll with it, you laugh it off, and everyone, including yourself, will have a better time. It all goes back to what we are talking about, how your voice impacts um, well, your entire platoon, your entire squad. Um, just like everyone else in your platoon or squad affects you and everyone else. Um, the more people are talking, the more people are being positive, the easier it is to ride off a hard double team or you know anything like that, but if everyone's being sour and everyone's down, it's really hard to raise morale and cohesion and make sure everyone has fun. Um, just because who wants to play when you know everyone's losing and having a bad time? So definitely keep that in mind that your voice can do a lot. Um, you're there to provide a positive experience, even when things are going negatively, when things are really hard and against you for the win. Um, accept it roll with it you know it's having that patience having that understanding that these things are going to happen um, 
and even when it looks like the other team is out to get you, they're not. They're playing the game just as much as you are, um, you know, as fair as they can, just like us. Um, they're there for the win, we're there for the win. So, yeah, definitely keep that in mind when those things are happening. Take it, accept it, roll with it, laugh it off. Um, and that's something I'm, I'm really passionate about, so I'm, I'm rehashing it a little bit here, but definitely keep that in mind.